Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers identification laws, noise ordinances, and the use of sound amplification, and is brought to us by Apologia Studios' channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Sometime around mid-December of 2017, Pastor Jeff Durbin and a group of followers of the Apologia Church in Tempe, Arizona, were protesting outside of a local establishment. Pastor Durbin was on a public sidewalk while using a megaphone to express his opinion of the nearby establishment, and someone in the vicinity called 911 and reported a noise complaint. Officers from the Tempe Police Department arrived on the scene shortly after the call and confronted the protesters. I have blurred out the message of the protest because the purpose of this video is to explore the nuance of the police interaction that takes place, not comment on the content of the protest itself. If you would like to know more about the Apologia Church and its message, a link to their website will be linked in the description. I got to see... Sure. Yeah. Why do you need my ID? I need to talk to you about uh, a complaint from the neighborhood. What's the What's the complaint about? The complaint is about sound amplification. Well, that's that's a legal activity. Sound amplification is legal. Activity. Yeah, I mean, I can show you. Well, I understand you can legally amplify. Yeah. I'm talking about disturbing somebody's peace. Yeah, that's that, that's, that's been I deal with. Yeah, that's been ruled on. That's no, don't, don't give me the law, just if I could get your name, would be great. Okay, well, I'm just asking why you need my name. I told you why. So are you, are you arresting me or charging me with a crime? Not at this point, I'd like to No, ID so then that. the state law of Arizona says that you can't ask for my ID unless I'm being charged with a crime. Here, Pastor Durbin suggests that he must be charged with a crime before the officer has the authority to identify him. But Arizona's identification laws are particularly stringent compared to the rest of the country. Arizona Revised Code 13-2412 states that it is unlawful for a person, after being advised that the person's refusal to answer is unlawful, to fail or refuse to state the person's true full name on request of a peace officer who has lawfully detained the person based on reasonable suspicion. And goes on to say that a person detained under this section must state their true full name, but are not required to answer any other inquiry of a peace officer. So, in the state of Arizona, if an officer has a reasonable suspicion to believe that someone was involved in a crime, then the officer may identify them by name, but not force them to answer any other questions. Pastor Durbin's failure to state his full name could have resulted in an arrest if the officer had met the reasonable suspicion standards set forth in the infamous Terry v. Ohio case. But we will discuss whether the Tempe officers actually did meet the reasonable suspicion standards in a moment. The point of this section is to highlight the fact that Arizona officers only need reasonable suspicion to force someone to state their full name. And Pastor Durbin is incorrect by stating that he must be charged with a crime before he can be compelled to state his name. Well, I mean, I am in the process of investigating a crime. Okay. What? Well, you just but ignored the. You get arrested. I, you know, I have to be able to do an investigation. Sure, but the law says. I don't just grab people and arrest them. No, I appreciate the officer, but you're a law enforcement official, and I'm showing you the law. The law says that in order for you to say I'm disturbing the peace has to be more than a vague generality of your own opinion. You have to have a you have to have a calibrated meter that demonstrates I'm over 65 decibels. Do you have a calibrated meter? Do I have to have a calibrated meter? You do. It's a city code. Like many larger cities, Tempe has drafted very specific laws regulating noise that disturbs the peace or is otherwise unnecessary. Section 20-6 of the Tempe City Code features a scheduled diagram that is divided into three parts: the zone, time, and noise standard. The amount of noise a citizen is allowed to make depends upon where they are in the city, and it is likely that Pastor Durbin is in an area that would be considered commercial given that he is protesting outside of a business. It is also safe to assume that this video was filmed sometime between the hours of 7 a.m. and 10 p.m., which would mean that Pastor Durbin is free to be as loud as 65 decibels. According to the CDC, a normal conversation is usually around 60 decibels, and a washing machine or dishwasher are around 70 decibels. Some megaphones can be as loud as 100 decibels, but this chart demonstrates the capabilities of a typical brand of megaphones compared to the volume of everyday sounds. There is a high probability that Pastor Durbin was in violation of Section 20-6. However, Section 20-5 states that in order to enforce the provisions of this chapter, the noise level must be measured on the A-weighted scale with a sound level meter that adheres to the American National Standard Guidelines. After Pastor Durbin informs the officer of this legal caveat, he remains skeptical, but continues to engage in a dialogue with the pastor. That's what it says. Okay, so, do you want to tell me who you are or you don't want to? 
No, officer, I respect your position. I'm a okay. pastor. I respect law enforcement. And I, and since you're law enforcement, the law says that you can't ask for my ID unless okay. you are well, charging well, me with well, a crime. I can ask you a million questions. You yeah. just need to tell me whether or not you want to do it or answer them. No, and, and just so you know, I respect your question. position immensely. I believe your position is ordained by God in terms well. of government. But I also believe that you and I both respect the law. And our Constitution says that I have a right to remain silent and not self-incriminate. And our state law says that in order for you to actually get my idea, I have to be cited with a crime. So you're telling me you don't want to identify yourself? Well, I'm happy to say my name. It's Pastor Jeff. I'm with Apologia Church. Okay. Jeff. It's Pastor Jeff. Just Pastor Jeff. Yeah. Okay. I'd be happy to show you this. This is the Supreme Court ruling, Federal Court of Appeals ruling, the City of Tempe's rules when it comes to noise ordinance. Yeah, I, I understand. I, I read all. Well, actually, I haven't read the Supreme Court's ruling. Okay. Take that back. Okay. I understand the city code. Okay. Um, what I'm dealing with is a complaint from the neighborhood. I understand. And I, and I understand where that's coming from. The, mm -hmm. the problem is, and I know you're a law enforcement officer, you took an oath to the Constitution, we have freedom of speech rights, and yeah. somebody saying, you're disturbing my peace because I don't like your message or I can hear it, isn't a valid reason to undo the Constitution of the United States that says I have freedom of speech. The U.S. Supreme Court has ruled on this. Somebody can't say I'm disrupting the peace because they don't like my message, because I'm amplifying, amplifying my voice. The law, which you and I both are committed to, states that I'm in a lawful activity right now. The use of megaphones can play an important role during a protest, and the relationship between sound amplification and the First Amendment has been discussed widely throughout higher courts. Many of the cases surrounding the use of sound amplifying devices for free speech are relatively controversial decisions. In the 1948 Supreme Court case of Saya versus New York, the court held that, quote, loudspeakers are today indispensable instruments of effective public speech, and determined that limits should be placed on the ability of government officials to restrict speech even when the government appears to be furthering an ostensibly legitimate purpose. The court went on to clarify that bans that are based on content rather than the method of communication constitute a prior restraint to freedom of speech and are therefore invalid. Several justices dissented this decision in favor of the notion that municipalities should be able to regulate disturbing noises. One year later, the Supreme Court reiterated the precedent that speech bans that are not based on viewpoint are valid in the 1949 case of Kovacs v. Cooper. In the case, the court upheld the conviction of a man under an ordinance that prohibited the use of sound trucks that emitted loud and raucous noises on city streets. Not only did the court decide that the phrase loud and raucous was not overly vague, but it also found that while city streets are a normal place for the exchange of ideas by speech or paper, they are not beyond control. The court reasoned that although the freedom of speech should be preserved as much as possible, it, quote, does not require legislators to be insensitive to claims by citizens to comfort and convenience. The Cooper case was yet another controversial decision in which several justices dissented, believing that the loud and raucous phrase was in fact too vague to be fairly enforced. Many other higher courts have addressed this issue, and the Ninth Circuit Court, which presides over Arizona, has ruled on the subject as recently as 2019 in the case of Cuvielo versus City of Vallejo. The general consensus among the courts is that cities do have a legitimate interest in regulating noise, but those regulations must be based on the effect of the noise itself and not the message being communicated. All that said, the constitutionality of Tempe City Code 20-6 is questionable, given that the code only allows for a volume level just above that of a normal conversation, and some circumstances may require the use of greater sound amplification to be heard, such as when standing next to a busy highway. In the Cuviello case, the Ninth Circuit noted that it had approved a permit requirement for amplified speech in excess of volume levels prohibited by the city's nuisance code in the past, but in that case, the permit requirement was tailored to advance the city's interest in protecting the public from disturbances caused by excessive noise. While it is clear that Pastor Durbin is likely in violation of City Code 20-6, it is debatable whether the code is constitutional, and the officers have no sound reading device to determine whether there is a violation as per Code 20-5. When it comes to law and law enforcement, when someone calls with just a complaint, I think it's incumbent upon us to at least educate those people that what's happening here is a lawful activity. It's not unlawful. Realize you got to give your spill to this gal in about two seconds. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Supervisor. Yeah. Okay. Hi, sound bite. Hi. How are you? Sound bite for you. Okay. 
Uh, I'm Sergeant Liz Lenzen, Tempe PD. Hello. Um, hey, who's been using the megaphone? Uh, I have. Yeah, and what's your name? Jeff. Jeff who? Yeah, Jeff. It's Pastor Jeff. Pastor Jeff. Yes. I'm so supposed to know. Where are you pastor at? Uh, Apologia Church in Tempe. Okay, and what's your last name, Jeff? Uh, do you need that for anything? Yes, we do, because we, we have a complaint that we're working. That's why we're here. Okay. Well, Otherwise, we would not be here. No, I respect your position. I was just telling this officer over here, in order to for me to identify myself, I have to be cited with a, a crime according to Arizona state law. Well, we're going to give you a warning right now, so we're going to need that for a street check. So what's your last name? Okay, so the warning is a violation of the law? Well, because of the amplified sound device. Well, what I was saying to the officer Where's was... Zach? He's right over here. Zach. Where's the other Zach? Zach yes, number Morgan, one. he's out of state right now. Okay, I'm used to... They know me. And Stephen knows me. So you're going to be given a warning. You cannot use. And well, you officer, you can't know. do that. Officer, you can't do that unless you have a calibrated meter according to city code. Oh, we can. And you um, test it. Yeah, we can. And so you you're can gonna violate get, this law. We have a complaint that's a citizen. A complaint of illegal activity. We have complaint of illegal activity. A disorderly conduct. Ma'am, that you, if you read the city code, you'll We're see not you arguing. can't. You've been given a warning. You can't use your amplified sound device. If you will, you go to jail. You've already been given that warning. Ma'am, you're not even looking at the, you're a supervisor, you won't look at the law? No, I know the law. We'll file a suit against you. Go ahead. Okay. Lenzen. Gotcha. -N -N. Okay, let's get that on the camera. Get Officer the Lenzen. Cam. We got our cams going. Officer Lenzen, would you like it to look at the law? Look at, we'll do this. Lenzen. Is this, this professional is activity on your part it to is. act, behave you, in this manner? You got a warning, so please don't do it. We don't what's really the warning want to for? You. This is my question. What's the and warning you've been for? Warned already. Okay. Officer, what's the warning for? Amplified sound device. That's legal activity. You can't use you it. You won't look at this? Don't use it. Don't it's a legal activity. We have a complaint. Ma'am, we'll sue you for violating our constitutional you can rights. Sue us. You can. It's your right. It is my right, you and, you, and I want to. I want to do this for the record of the court. She will not look at the city you got code. A warning. Thank you. You won't look at the city code. No, I already know it. Yeah, ma'am, I reject your warning. Okay. I reject it. We're going to And we're going to continue to use sound application because our, it's our constitutional right. And if you if you try to violate our constitutional rights, we will sue you okay. and the city of Tempe. Okay. Okay? Thank you. All right. And just know it's on record. You refuse to see the city code. You refuse okay. to look at it. You don't have it, man. You don't even know what it is. The officers leave the scene without arresting anyone, and Pastor Durbin continued to use his megaphone. I was unable to locate any further details about whether Pastor Durbin filed any complaints against the sergeant, and the Apologia Church did not respond to my request for comments. Overall, Pastor Durbin gets an A-, minus because although he was incorrect about Arizona's identification laws, he maintained a calm and collected demeanor throughout the interaction, engaged in a productive dialogue with the responding officer, and did his due diligence by researching the applicable laws and precedent beforehand. Pastor Durbin's polite but uncompromising attitude served him well during this encounter, but there were moments where it may have been in his best interest to remain silent. Pastor Durbin's conduct perfectly demonstrates the power of being well-prepared during a police interaction, and I commend him for approaching the encounter with a high degree of professionalism. Whether or not you agree with Pastor Durbin's message, his right to express that message should be respected, and he did a great job of ensuring they were in the most peaceful way possible. The initial responding officer gets a B, and Sergeant Lenzen gets an F. The initial officer was skeptical of Pastor Durbin's assertions at first, and after several failed attempts to identify the pastor, the officer seemed to understand his position, but ultimately deferred to his superior. The initial officer was assertive, but not hostile, and put aside his ego after being conversationally disarmed by Pastor Durbin. The sergeant, on the other hand, was only interested in fulfilling protocol, and made no effort to conduct a legitimate investigation into the legality of the circumstances. She also behaved unprofessionally by not taking a moment to review the laws or share her understanding of them with Pastor Durbin, and completely dismissing everything he said in his defense. Sergeant Lenzen left the scene without identifying or arresting anyone, but she did say that she was filing an official warning, which could be used against the pastor in later trials if any should arise. The sergeant's neglect to conduct a thorough investigation played a major role in this interaction. But if the sergeant had happened to have a sound measuring device on hand, then the outcome of this interaction may have been very different. Nonetheless, if Pastor Durbin was measured by a device and charged under Tempe Code 20-6, it would still offer him an opportunity to challenge the code's constitutionality. Go check out the Apologia Studios YouTube channel if you are interested in learning about the conclusion to this interaction, because I was unable to locate any additional information about what happened afterwards. You can find a link to their channel in the description below. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more police interaction content.